The Tudor Black Bay Bronze is a watch that doesn't garner quite as much attention as other smaller members of the Black Bay family. It is the largest of the bunch measuring in at 43 millimeters in case diameter. 52 millimeters is the lug to lug length while the height comes in at 14.5 millimeters. So there is no getting around it. It is a large watch. But at the same time, I was surprised at how at home this watch felt on my 7.25 inch wrist. I really like the weight. I really like the presence and I really like the overall appearance. I had the thought as I was wearing this that not only could I pull off this larger Black Bay case, but it would be really enjoyable to do so. So minor personal gripes aside about this specific strap, more on that in a minute. I really think that this would make a great daily wear watch. Now, Tudor has been focusing recently on their smaller Black Bay models. They really haven't touched this largest size since 2019 when the slate gray dial was introduced to the lineup. So I would really welcome a release of this case, this larger 43 millimeter case in stainless steel or perhaps even in titanium, especially if it would retain the lovely Arabic markers that are found in places on this dial. In my opinion, this is the most attractive of the Black Bay dial offerings. Now, a couple things about this COSC certified sports watch. Like all Tudor divers, it has class leading bezel action. The bezel action alone will be enough to tip some consumers over the fence to purchase this piece. It is loud, it is snappy, it is precise. There is just the right amount of grip present uh, here with the coin edging and the amount of torque needed to change positions is just perfect. So this will not accidentally move out of position and it will not be overly difficult to operate in any circumstance. Yeah, simply put, it is fantastic. Now the loom is likewise satisfying. There is a lot of surface area on these long, large snowflake hands. It has good potency and good longevity. Now the dial details are another element that really drew me in. The dial is a domed shape with a very faint fume textured slate gray color and the gray tone borders on green in some light scenarios, which I think will really complement the bronze as it patinas over time and darkens over time. The accent color of the dial is a gilt tone, which also complements the warm look of this bronze case. The printing is crisp. The metallic appliques are polished and very well done. The dial just achieves a strong sense of balance with the omittance of the date complication. This is all visible under a box shaped sapphire crystal that appears to have no discernible ARC, one of the model's very few drawbacks. Now the movement within the case is the MT5601. It is a highly shock resistant and highly anti-magnetic caliber with 70 hours of power reserve, a four hertz beat frequency, and 25 joules. There will be a free sprung balance, a silicon hairspring, and micro-sized balance adjusting screws. It will not be visible as this diver has a traditional stainless steel case back. Now the case back looks like it's bronze, but it is stainless steel. It is coated to match the tone of the bronze, and I find this a nice aesthetic feature that is also intended to minimize any skin contact, you know, from your wrist to the case, the bronze portion of the case. So nickel contained in the bronze alloy has the capacity to elicit allergic reactions in people with sensitive skin. So the fact that the large surface area that has contact with your wrist is done in stainless steel is just a smart and aesthetic uh, choice here. So I like that. Now I'll mention the areas for improvement. The Sapphire Crystal carries no discernible ARC. I think that would be a welcome addition to the model. And lastly, the OEM leather strap is just average at best. Certainly nothing that I would be excited about when spending 
$400 at retail. If I were to purchase this watch, which I very well may do, it is so well done. Uh, I would source a fitted rubber B strap that utilizes the factory bronze buckle. Then it would be more comfortable. I think it would look better aesthetically and it would be better suited to be taken in water because this is a 200 meter diver after all. But in summation, this watch has great presence. It does not wear too large, although it is a large watch. It has a great in-house movement. The dial has the coveted partial Arabics and the lovely snowflake hands. The loom is solid. The bezel action is fantastic. This is balanced and I think fairly uncommon amongst watch collectors. Now the Black Bay Bronze will darken and patina over time. It will, in a sense, develop some individual character. And after a while, if you own this and if desired, the patina could be removed to brighten the material and bring it back similar in appearance to how this looks right now. So the watch just has the capacity to really change over time and over use. So it is surprisingly dynamic and surprisingly versatile in that regard. So uh, just to close here, I'd love Tudor to expand upon this largest Black Bay case size, perhaps more dial colors in bronze, or perhaps an execution with a bronze bracelet like the Bronze 58 exclusive release, or perhaps Tudor releases this in stainless steel or even titanium. I think they would be surprised at how well those would sell. I would be interested myself. Now, Tudor, in my opinion, is likely the last truly value-rich luxury watch brand, and watches like this Black Bay Bronze illustrate that sentiment. So thank you to Brent Miller Jewelers for providing this example for me to highlight. If you are shopping any Tudor watch, please reach out to the store. They really are an excellent family-owned brick-and-mortar AD I'll leave a link in the description of this video. So please like this if you found it helpful and please subscribe for more content just like this.